I have a discussion to uh, help us understand how electronegativity affects bonding. What I've done here is listed the boiling points of two elements and one compound. I've listed the boiling point of hydrogen and oxygen. Both of them are sub-zero boiling points. Hydrogen boils at minus 250 degrees uh, Celsius. Oxygen boils at minus 186. So it's hard to understand the idea of uh, a sub-zero substance boiling, but that's precisely what happens with gases. Things that are uh, gases at room temperature need to be chilled to that temperature before they form a liquid. So they have to be kept below this temperature or else they boil away. The peculiar point, data point uh, is the boiling point of water. You'll notice that water is made of both hydrogen and oxygen, so you would expect, given that it's made of two substances that boil at sub-zero temperatures, that it too would boil at a sub-zero temperature. But we all know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, which is over 200 degrees removed from the boiling point of the gases that compose it. Water should boil at a sub-zero temperature too, were it not for uh, the effects that hydrogen bonding exert upon the molecules. The hydrogen bonding that happens in water is the result of a dipole that forms between the oxygen and hydrogen bond. The oxygen atom is considerably more electronegative than hydrogen, so it pulls the electrons closer to it in the, in, the, in the bond between oxygen and hydrogen. So you get a slight negative charge forming at the oxygen atom in water, whereas you get a slight positive charge forming at the hydrogen atom. That results in a dipole. And when two, mar two water molecules are close to each other, those two dipoles will orient like little magnets, and uh, there will be a, a weak bond will form between the oxygen atom of one water molecule and the hydrogen atom of the other water molecule. That bond is weak, but nevertheless, energy has to be put into breaking it. And that accounts for why water uh, will ha has a higher boiling point. It takes a lot of energy to break all those bonds that form. And it also accounts for things like um, the ability that we have to, say, style hair. When somebody wants to style their hair, they heat it. They heat, they heat the slightly wet hair, and then they form it with a curling iron. Um, so that when the water boils away again, it, uh, the hydrogen bonds that are on the strands of hair can reform and hold the hair in the shape that, that, that they want, where you can straighten the hair doing it by holding it straight and drying it out in that position. So the same idea is that we're breaking hydrogen bonds and reforming them so that it styles the hair. When we wet our fingertip to turn the page of uh, 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 paper, we're creating hydrogen bonds between our finger and the paper to increase our adherence of our finger to the paper. So hydrogen bonding is ubiquitous. It's, you see it everywhere in nature. Um, so I'll read you the uh, conclusion to this thought experiment. A hydrogen bonding is created by an intermolecular force that causes water molecules to cling to each other. The electronegativity of oxygen is 3.44, while hydrogen is 2.2. The OH bond is polar with a slight negative charge near oxygen and a slight positive charge near hydrogen. The charge asymmetry creates a dipole. The dipoles from two adjacent water molecules will interact to form a dipole-dipole interaction, where the positive charge on the hydrogen atom of one molecule is attracted to the negative charge of, on the oxygen atom of another molecule. When the dipole-dipole uh, interaction is particularly strong, we call it hydrogen bonding. 